So after all, it didn't take a long. Uh, it's much. It, it took much shorter time than I expected to finish the scan against uh, Motivi Day by uh, Burp Suite Scanner. So as you see, everything is finished. And now let's review what changed in the uh, issues pane. So now there are a lot of them. We can review them one by one and we can set uh, different severity levels if they differ from what uh, Burp Suite has guessed, right? So we can like mark every everything is false positive if we like. Uh, and we can change uh, the confidence level as well. So. Uh, from here we see that there are multiple cross-site scripting vulnerabilities reported, uh, 30 entry points, okay? And uh, that's pretty much expected, yeah, from a vulnerable piece of code, the code that is vulnerable by design. And uh, let's see what we can do about it, yeah? So well, all these issues um, can be exported in some form, right? So we select all of them and report selected issues in XML or HTML form. Why XML? Um, you can use that uh, for your own report generation tools uh, that many penetration testers uh, design or adopt to speed up uh, this, I would say, uh, not the most <laughs> interesting and inspiring uh, part of our job just to see how it looks like in the HTML. Let's uh, go through this uh, and uh, save it as verb report to in the wizard. And let's see that, yeah, it didn't take much time to generate. And then I'll just open it for review. Yeah, so this pretty neat looking report is uh, quite large. Yeah, so normally for a less vulnerable web application, you would see much less vulnerabilities, but you see everything is uh, hypertext and you can browse the issues. You can see the excerpts. You can f include full uh, re requests and responses here, but uh, I've chosen Mm, only a representative portion or portions of uh, those uh, inputs and outputs while going through the wizard. So, as you see, yeah, there are just signs of those SQL injections here, for example. Yeah, so this should be verified manually before generating the final report, but still. We have uh, verified that, <laughs> yeah. So username is uh, totally vulnerable to SQL injection, and we have bypassed the authentication by it. So this is how it looks like. Uh, Burp Suite, of course, has uh, many modules, many extensions that integrate it with the uh, penetration testing collaboration uh, toolkits. Yeah, many of them, and uh, yeah, export to XML can make uh, this report available for integration into any other product. So enough on reporting, let's now take an XSS, yeah, of a sort, like one of those uh, uh, confirmed ones, right? Preferably something in page parameter because uh, it's uh, the most uh, it has the most potential for exploitation, yeah? So if you have something in uh, injectable into URL, okay? Like here we see, right? Uh, it is possible to just craft uh, the XSS payload and send it as a shortened URL to the target, okay? So, yeah, let's try to do that. Let's take this request and send it to repeater. What do we have here? Pressing go, rendering, well not, uh, I think, execute JavaScript for us, but in the raw output we can search for alert and see that, yeah, it's uh, present at six different 
places. And uh, according to syntax highlight, we have at least three entries uh, in the actual HTML output, right? So how can we verify that? First of all, let me introduce you to automatic proxy rewrites. Yeah, so we can match and replace something. Uh, the XSS in Google Chrome will not work unless we explicitly instruct it to disable XSS protection. So why we do that? Just to see that, yeah, it's reflected and uh, if we use a less secure browser, it will uh, be compromised, okay? So let's just uh, uncheck this here and uh, go back to repeater and uh, go send it the request again and see the request in the browser, right? So, the response basically did not trigger any XSS, right? So let's now go back to proxy settings and uh, check this XSS protection disabling uh, header, yeah? What now will happen is, uh, let me just show you. Yeah, you see, now XSS is triggered at least four, five, five times, right? And uh, what happens here, let's review, uh, we see the request that contains XSS payload, a pretty simple one, uh, and we see original response that uh, came back to the proxy and we see auto modified response that is different by adding this uh, particular HTTP header that disables XSS. Why doing that? First of all to generalize over the situation right because uh, we never know what uh, uh, browser version uh, victim has yeah so Firefox most probably will be uh, compromised by this simple payload. Uh, Chrome Chrome and uh, Safari and anything based on WebKit most probably will not be compromised. Uh, and the uh, Internet Explorer and Edge are <laughs> edge cases, yeah. So <laughs> these are uh, pretty much undocumented. And uh, uh, second of all, even with Chrome, even with, uh, with Edge, even with Safari, the most secure browsers, you always can uh, avoid detection and circumvent uh, XSS filtering. So, uh, again, relying on the client side for protection is not uh, enough and should be avoided. This is a false thinking, yeah? So this is like a fundamental fallacy. It should be avoided uh, at any cost. And uh, in this way, we basically just see what happens uh, when we interoperate with the server side and do not rely on the client side protection. So, uh, yeah, you know, seeing this uh, alert one message may indicate uh, the presence of XSS, but uh, What's not very cool here is that uh, the business risk is not basically shown yeah, to anyone. Uh, and uh, I already mentioned most probably that XSS is uh, pretty much underrated yeah, in the wild. And uh, it has to be dealt with uh, in some other way to show the risk, to uh, demonstrate that... Uh, Giving these pop-ups is not all that can happen, yeah? And for that, uh, you can, of course, use uh, Beef, which is quite uh, an interesting tool, but it's more for exploitation. Uh, I prefer using XSS Hunters, Hunter, which is uh, basically a free service you can register for using, and it will provide you with everything required. 
let's remove burp from proxy for now. Okay. Uh, am I logged in? I don't think so. Oh, it looks like I'm not so. I'm not a robot man. Oh, I hate this. But for a tool like this, I think it's essential. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? Uh, here we have like my previous collection of different uh, XSS attempts. So let's generate some. Yeah. So what can we use? Uh, first of all, we go to payloads, and uh, yeah, everything that's listed here is some form of uh, like delivering that uh, uh, request that it will come back to XSS Hunter for the so-called uh, callback, right? So uh, it will be just uh, triggering the further action, right? The uh, actual payload is a large, access, uh, large uh, JavaScript file, the library, that is loaded by this payload into the browser and it performs uh, let's call it evidence collection okay so let's use just this uh, the smaller the smallest one right and let's put it here right to the page parameter right and uh, yeah let's just see what happens of course this connection is not private uh, most probably nothing happened because we didn't use our XSS protection disabling rewrites so let's do that again all right so as you see no pop-ups nothing really happens uh, except for some gibberish return back to the target and now let's go to burp suite and see what happened there let's remove this filter for now and uh, you see five times the callback has been called from uh, my personal XSS Hunter URI. Yeah. So this already is a sign of uh, something going on. Yeah. So this is uh, the actual callback. This is its original form. This is some modified form. So. This is the callback JavaScript module that uh, I told you about. It's pretty large, yeah? So it's a lot of functionality. That explains uh, the small lagging that we observed and uh, the page was uh, loading into the browser. So let's go to my, as you see, yeah? I will not show you my email, but uh, <laughs> those uh, six, those six messages, five of them, are uh, the emails that uh, notify me about uh, that my XSS Hunter module has been triggered. Okay, we just will go straight to the web interface. I will reload that and uh, voila. It takes some time to load, but <laughs> you can yeah, see that. And I hope it gives you an idea about what can be done. Basically, in the full report for each uh, XSS Hunter trigger, we see full HTML code, of course. 
we can the URL used, we can the origin of execution, we can the we can see the uh, client IP address. The referrer is absent. We did that directly. Uh, the victim user agent is here. The cookies, including everything set for that specific domain, right, will be here. The whole uh, DOM model is sent back and uh, yeah if there is some correlation with other triggered events we will see that too so yeah I hope that gives I hope that uh, this demonstration gives you an idea of how much you can accomplish with the XSS yeah by using uh, the tools that are out there in the public domain and even the services that are available for you to uh, register and use for free uh, okay so I think that's uh, enough for XSS for now uh, let's get to the next topic